a connection between Joe Burrow and Seven Banks, expanding on a listener question about the running back rotation and another Buckeye enters the portal. All that and more right here on Locked on Buckeyes. You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Tuesday, April 19th in the year 2022, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen or first watch of every single day. When I was starting and thinking about and preparing for the show, I was not anticipating some news to come out that would connect seven banks to Joe Burrow. When Joey B was at Ohio State and he decided to enter the portal, he ultimately ended up transferring to LSU. Seven banks into the portal about a month or two ago. It was There was news that came out after he was in, in the portal that was kind of why he – did not have a scholarship during the spring semester because people thought he was going to the NFL and they, was go- they were planning on using his scholarship in a different way. But Seven Banks now has decided where he's going to play football next year, and it's the same place Joey B played football after he left Columbus. That is LSU. Brian Kelly continues to make waves, to make some changes, and to really just make some big moves with at LSU, some things that I think he needed to do, especially when you're losing, I believe it's four defensive backs. I think it's specifically four cornerbacks that you're losing. you got to make some splashes. you got to make sure your team is up to the task to be what it wants to be, which is a national champion. And Brian Kelly's making some, making some phenomenal moves. And I do think bringing seven banks into LSU is a huge deal for the Tigers. I hope only for the best for seven banks. And I hope only for the best for anybody that leaves Columbus to go somewhere else, somebody that might come to Columbus. It doesn't really matter. If you're playing college football, just in general, national, the great land, great land that is college football. I hope only for the best, and that does not change when it comes to seven banks going from Columbus down to the bayou. Here's what he had to say on Twitter when he announced that he is going to be going to LSU to play the football. And this is this is news that came out actually on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday morning. I tried reading it word for word. Um, there's grammatical errors and Something kind of sound a little jumbled up. So I'm going to try to read it as well as I can without laughing because someone needs to help not just this young man, but numerous people proofread these statements before you tweet them out because the grammatical errors when you're making a big statement like this, they're not right. Not right at all. Somebody help these young men out and young women that are making statements about transferring and committing to schools because of grammatical errors, this is not the time for them. Here's what Seven Banks had to say on Twitter. Quote, what's done in the dark shall come to the light. Forever love Buckeye Nation. It's in me, a part of me. Be what God has for me. It, but, excuse me, but what God has for me is bigger than anything. I believe that's what he meant to say. Had to kind of change some things up. Here's a picture of him saying committed. LSU, there's a tiger on the side. National championship trophy right there. Uh, has a seven over a, a seven necklace around his neck. Um, LSU jersey. Well, the pants and the helmet. No jersey. Um, no top, at least, the shoulder pads. But Seven Banks going to the Bayou. I I, I, I like this. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I like it a lot. Now, you look at his stats. You know, you always, always got to check people's stats out a little bit. Seven Banks got injured, um, was a starter in 2020, was projected by some to be a potential first-round pick in the 2021. Um, no, excuse me, this upcoming NFL draft. He was projected to possibly be a first-round pick off of projections, only that he could he could project to get better. That didn't happen. He only played four games this past year, had eight tackles, one pass breakup. That was the extent of his uh, stats throughout the entire year. Um, injuries, recovery, and then plus Cam Brown and Denzel Berg really showed that they are number one and number two corners at Ohio State, which really derailed any plan Seven Banks had of 
Well, let's slow down. That's part of the reason why things have slowed down for him as far as progressing and being the better player that he could be. Ultimately, he just was never healthy, man. Like, sometimes the injury bug gets you. Similar to what's going on with Marcus Crawley. We're going to talk about that here in a second in the very next segment. But sometimes the injury bug just gets you and you don't recover as quickly as you think you should, as you want to. It just happens. Some people's bodies, we see Adrian Peterson, tears ACL, then rush for 2,000 yards. That's unheard of. That's not normal. You see some guys that tear an ACL, they just can't get back to being themselves. It's The human body's weird, man. The human body is very, very weird. You have amazing technology right now. We have amazing um, doctors that have all the knowledge, all the information. They have all the technology to tap into what's wrong with you. And sometimes... The recovery system is not the way we want it to be. And that's the same way it is with seven banks. I think if he recover, if he recovered quicker, he probably would have been a starter. I mean, ultimately, he probably would have been a starter, could have been that nickel corner or the cover safety. And I know it's a different role. They Ohio State puts a safety in that role. That primarily could have you could have seen a defense that had Denzel Burke and Cam Brown and then seven banks on the field at the same time. Now, granted, I don't think all three of them have or what have the ideal skill set for that nickel corner or cover safety, but you could definitely see that happening in passing situations. You bring in all three of them, put them on the field, let them spin, let them do their job. Defenses wouldn't like that at all. Mm -mm, not at all. And if Seven Banks wants to go to a program that could use him now, that could help him win now, they can help him get to the NFL now. LSU is a place for that to happen. LSU has lost, it was correct earlier, four cornerbacks um, this year. Derek Stingley, Derek Stingley Jr., Cordell Flott, Eli Ricks, and Dwight McLaughlin. And then their <clears throat> Banks is becoming the fourth transfer cornerback cornerback to LSU in the offseason. Makai Garner from, from Louisiana. Jarek Bernard Converse from Oklahoma State. I don't think I've ever heard a guy with a last name Converse, but there's a first time for many things. Not everything, but many things. And then Greg Brooks from Arkansas transferred to LSU as well. Seven Banks, I believe he wants to win. Seven Banks, I believe he wants to go to the NFL. Winning and going to the NFL, LSU is a great spot to do that. Yeah, you got to run through Alabama and other teams in the in the SEC. But if you want to be an NFL draft pick, if you want to win, Brian Kelly, he's a winner. LSU, they do phenomenal things, and this is a great spot for him. And I, I just can't wait to see what he does in the upcoming season down there in the Southeastern Conference. Thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen every day. And make sure to remember to mark this on your calendar that starting Thursday, April 28th, tune into Locked On NFL Draft's live coverage of the 2022 NFL Draft with all three days of real-time analysis from our extensive lineup of experts and insiders. And for those of you dying to know who your team will take, catch Odyssey and Locked On NFL's a Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Special hosted by Brian Peacock and former scout Matt Williamson of the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show all week leading up to the first pick. This is a big deal, a huge deal. The NFL Draft is a great deal. It's a big, it's huge for the NFL and the young men that are involved. And if you want the best coverage, phenomenal coverage, make sure to tap into Locked On's coverage, live coverage of the NFL draft. So on Twitter, this was on, let me think, let me think. I believe this was Saturday after the spring game. I was probably, I, it was probably when I was getting something to eat before driving back home to Indianapolis after the spring game. Um, I got a question on Twitter and the person was asking me, how do I feel about the running back rotation? The word I used was satisfied. With Marcus Crawley out, we know things are going to be a little bit different. You know it's going to be Travion Henderson, one, Mayan Williams, two, and currently right now, Evan Pryor, number three. And with th seeing those things, and I believe uh, Dallin Hayden from Tennessee, a four-star commit, will be here in June. Um, I, I am personally satisfied with the running back rotation. I have no problems with, with what they've done or what they did or how they used them and how they got them some touches. 
I am currently satisfied. But a, another thought was in my, in my mind about the running back rotation. Not so much like one, two, three, four. But could Ohio State use three running backs this year? And if not, did they only stick with two? How many touches do Travion Henderson and Mayan Williams get every single game? Because I do think there is a fundamental thought and belief that Travion Henderson, which I think is, that is fair, is going to be the number one running back. But there's also that belief that Mayan Williams needs to be on the field in some capacity consistently every single game. Should they use three running backs? I would ultimately say no. This is nothing against Evan Pryor or if Marcus Crawley was healthy or anybody else on the team. I don't think it's a knock on them at all. I just think those top two guys are so good. I mean, they're absolutely so good. They deserve to be on the field. If my if, if Trevor Henderson was not on Ohio State, Mayan Williams, Mayan Williams would be the starter, and there's no questions asked. Nobody has a problem with that. He's talented. He's really, really talented. And even though we call him meatball, meatball and pork chop, whatever you want to call him, you can look at him and tell that he's getting quicker. His feet are quicker. Um, that that jump hop in the hole is getting crisper. I mean, he's becoming a running back that nobody will want to see on the field. He is so good. But Trevia Anderson is better, which is scary, which is really, really scary. No, I personally don't think Ohio State should use three running backs this year, even though I do think there's a there's a case to be made, even if Crowley were healthy, that Evan Pryor is RB3 for the team. I have no problem saying that, but I still don't think you should um, use three running backs just to force it, force them. We saw, you guys remember, many of you that were here last year, remember some things I said in regards to the running, the rotation on defense and how much I did not like what they were doing. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. It annoyed me. It absolutely annoyed me. You know, you're at the store and all of a sudden you're at the store and you see somebody that just keeps looking at you and looking at you and looking at you. You're like, well, what, you, what you doing? Why are you, why are you looking at me? And then they keep, they, keep, they keep following you. Here's a real life story. Not so much like a grocery store. Here's a real life story. Something that really annoys me. I go into a store. And I walk in. People all around. Let's just say it. Let's just say it's just a shoe store. Um, not, not, not nothing like a Foot Locker or a Finish Line or anything like that. Champ Sports. No, no. Let's go a little bit, a little bit lower, less people, um, more confined. You can look at it and see it. Let's just go with the uh, famous footwear. Uh, I'm just picking a random store. I really don't. I've never. I haven't shopped there in a long time. I just get like some some cheap shoes there. But let's say I go to a, a small, cheaper shoe store, and I walk in, and it feels like somebody is they're they're just staring at me. I mean, just just staring at me the whole time. And I'm like, what are you doing? And I go to the back, try to go to the clearance, DSW, so there's some, a place like that. I go and just try to make sure that I'm trying to spend the least amount of money as possible, get the best bang for my buck. And I'm going back to the back of the clearance, and it seems like somebody's just following me. And I look around, I'm like, do they realize that I ain't got nothing? There's nothing that's going to happen to, to their store, to their shoes, to nothing they got. I ain't here to, to steal a, a pair of socks or any shoe cleaner. I ain't here to do none of that. All I'm here to do is buy some shoes, put my card there, either insert the chip or tap that thing there, go on about my merry way. I ain't about to steal nothing. But seems like somebody just keeps following you and following you and following you. You look around. Ain't nobody else being followed, like, followed and checked out and looked at like you are. It's really, really annoying. That's real life story. That's the that stuff that's happened to me numerous times. I'm uh, not just at shoe stores, but it's just in general. I do know for a fact there have been people that have looked at me personally, maybe because I'm black. I don't know, but they have looked at me and followed me more closely at, in stores. It happens. That's how annoyed I was when it came to Ohio State's um, defensive rotation last year, forcing guys on the field that shouldn't have shouldn't have been there, or forcing guys on the field. Just to keep them happy, I don't know. It just didn't make any sense. Playing three three running backs this year, it's not needed. Your top two guys are so good. Don't don't force it. Don't force it. I don't think Tony Alford would. Just don't force it. Just let let them spin. Now, when you think about letting the top two guys spin, how many touches should they get? Now, this also goes to think about the high octane passing attack that Ohio State will have. 
Now, I do think you could get eight to ten touches from Mayan Williams in a game. Now, that may be a little high. I would, you could probably say five to eight touches from Mayan Williams every single game. Ten would be a luxury if you could get those. When I say touches, I do mean not just rushing uh, rushes or carries, but also catches out of the backfield. I do firmly think you could get Mayan Williams and Travion Henderson in the passing game to really throw out different wrinkles at the opposition. And one thing Ryan Day said last year was that the running, the rushing game was not up to the standard that it set at Ohio State. Ryan Day wants a balanced offensive attack. 250 passing yards per game, 250 rushing yards per game. That's a standard that he wants. Didn't set it, didn't meet it last year. It was actually pretty <laughs> not close when it comes to the rushing game. But if you get Mayan Williams involved, you could get Travion Henderson anywhere between 15 to 20 touches per game. You're going to get a better running game, going to get more balance, going to get a better offensive line, more consistent play out of them, a better rushing game. The guys that are at the guard position are actually guards. Let that sink in. We're getting back to real Buckeye football with guys back in their proper positions. Wow, it's rocket science. We're getting back to what actually works. Sorry, sorry, I'm off that train. But if you get Henderson those touches, you get Mayan Williams those touches, five to eight, or maybe eight to ten for Mayan Williams a game. And then also with Travion Henderson, uh, you may want to get uh, 15 to 20 touches a game. I firmly think, firmly think those two guys together might be the best running back duo in the Big Ten could be competing to be the best or one of the better running back duos in the entire country. I don't think really the Big Ten thing is going to be a problem. Travion, Travion Henderson is probably going to be the best running back, running back in the Big Ten. Um, you also have the kid Braylon Allen from Wisconsin. That's phenomenal. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. But those two guys will be fighting to be the best back in the Big Ten. I don't think another school has a better <coughs> one-two punch uh, running back duo than Henderson and Williams. When it comes to the entire country, that's a different story. But those two together, if they get the ball as much as they should, should be in the running to be one of the best running back duels in the in the entire country. I see the YouTube comments. Thank you for them. My guy Hummus Hero put one up a couple days ago. Someone else uh, chimed in. Thank you for the YouTube comments. Thank you for the YouTube su subscriptions. The channel keeps growing. Our deadline will love to hit 1,000 subscriptions by the start of the 2022 NFL Draft, which starts <coughs> a week from Thursday on April 28th. Be sure to tap in there and to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe on your friend's computer, on your mama's computer, on your dad's iPhone. It don't really matter. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Let's keep this channel growing and you guys are a great part of why it's growing, and you guys make it better. Oh, really quickly, if you guys have any questions you want to submit to me at all, you can DM me at jstevens07. You can email me, jstevens317 at gmail.com, or drop them in the YouTube comments. I get a lot of content, a lot of thought from the YouTube comments. Drop them in there. I will gladly use those as content, as you guys know, because I think you guys make the show better. The show is for you. And why not make the show that's for you a show that lets you guys answer, ask questions so people can figure out what you're thinking and maybe somebody else has the same thought that you have. This is a time I was wondering when a Buckeye would enter the transfer portal because at the end of spring practice, we saw how the rotations went. Um, we saw how the players that got on the field, we saw uh, who had improved, who had not improved. And I was really curious if we were going to see a Buckeye enter the transfer portal after this spring game. Would it be that same day? Would it be on Sunday? No, what neither one of those days. It waited. It was not until Monday afternoon slash evening. Monday afternoon when Jacob Cowan, defensive lineman, six foot four, 280 pound defensive lineman, decided this is the time for him to enter the transfer portal. A freshman in 2020 came to the team. He was a part of the uh, he was the number 17 defensive tackle in the 2020 uh, tw class of 2020, the number 163 overall player in that class. Didn't play at all the true freshman year due to an injury. He played a little bit, just a little bit, only 44 snaps in 2021. 
and he played in seven games. And then ultimately, he believes that this is the proper time for him to go into the transfer portal. Jacob Cowan last year only played, didn't play very, very much at all. Only three games, had three tackles. That was the extent of his time period on the field at Ohio State. Even though Ohio State played a lot of guys, I mean, the entire season, Cowan's injury and just him being young and being inexperienced. And even though Jack Sawyer and JTT were young and inexperienced, their talent outweighed their inexperience and they deserved it needed to be on the field. Well, Cowan was getting into his zone. He was working to get back. He was recovering from an injury. And sometimes, sometimes, I said it once, I'll say it again. Sometimes that recovery from an injury is not the way we want it to be. Here's what Jacob Cowan had to say about in regards to him entering the transfer portal. Quote, timing is everything. Timing is everything is a cliche, but it rings true and is extremely relatable in my situation. I committed to Ohio State, to the Ohio State University, and came to Columbus with such high hopes. However, the pandemic and a season-ending injury had a detrimental effect on the start of my college career. As we know, our plans are not always the plans that God has for us. I have accepted that it is time to move on. After much thought and prayer, I have decided to enter into the transfer portal, end quote. He goes on, has have another paragraph, talks about the relationships that he has built, the coaching staff, thanking Buckeye Nation. Then last but not least, thank you to my family and all for all of your support in helping me to navigate through uncertain times onward and upward. I'm ready to see what the future holds. Time to play ball. I firmly think this young man has a good head on his shoulders. And I, I, I firmly understand why he is making this decision right now. If I'm a young man on this football team and the recovery is not there, my spot on the depth chart is not there, I understand why some young men and young women for different sports decide that they that this is the time for them to enter the portal. I firmly get it. Absolutely get it. I do think so, too many people hop into the portal way too quickly, but I understand. I can understand their thought process. That doesn't mean I ultimately agree with them, but I firmly understand their thought process. And Mr. 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 Cowan, I, I, I get it, man. I get it. You want to play. You want to play. Similar to Legend of Azos, he wants to play. He simply wa he, he, he wants to play college football. He knows he can play college football. Unfortunately, after a couple of years at the school that you committed to, things have not gone your way, and you feel this is the right time to move on. I get it. Firmly get it. Just like Seven Banks, just like Legend Cavazos, just like Justin Arns, just like Michi Johnson. There's a lot of guys in the portal. My goodness. I mean, at the beginning of the show, when I said another buck I entered the portal, I had no intention of going through a list of guys very quickly off the top of the dome that have entered the portal. You, went, you factor in Jack Miller III and Quinn Ewers and Kayvon Pope and Dallas Canton. The list goes on and on and on. There's a lot of guys in the portal, and I hope all of them do phenomenal things at the collegiate level in the upcoming year and the rest of the time they're playing the sport, basketball, or football that they play in college. Guys. We are out of here for the day. I want to thank you once again for tapping into and enjoying another episode of the Locked on Buckeyes podcast. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. You can also send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. Thank you for making Locked on Buckeyes your first to listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked on NFL Draft podcast. Ryan Tracy and former NFL defensive back Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available just like the Locked on Buckeyes podcast wherever you get your fine podcast.